for today, we're going to be going back to a favorite good old fashioned in fact. Best way to kill him is to kill him quick, either through Blighted Agent or Glistener Elf. We utilize the infect mechanic, which says if an opponent has or if a player has poison counters, specifically if that player has 10 or more poison counters, they lose the game. So we've got this 12 creatures that have infect between Glistener Elf, Blighted Agent, and Inkpoth Nexus. And uh, then we try to pump them and protect them. We pump them using cards like Recumbents, Might of Old Crosa, which is a um, plus two, plus two at instant speed. Or if we do it during our main phase, it's plus four, plus four. Uh, Groundswell, which is a plus four, plus four if we've had a land enter the battlefield this turn. And then Scale Up, which is turn it into a six, four creature. And then for protection, we've got spells like Binds of Vastwood, which gives um, a target creature hex. Not hexproof. Target creature can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. It's worded that way as a very funny way because it's not strictly hexproof. If I was to target my opponent, my opponent's creature with a Vines of Vastwood, they could not target their creature with their own spells. Um, just a fun little nuance with Vines of Vastwood. And then Become Immense is another way to protect. Gives This one strictly specifies hexproof. And plus two plus two then you've got mutagenics as a way to pump at instant speed for zero mana and then a distortion strike to give your creature such as the glistener elf unblockable <laughs> again along the lines of protection we've got two spell skites in the main board because that way we can redirect any spell that's going to kill our creature onto this spell skite instead so our, our spell skite takes the bullet other than that, we've got some creature removal ourselves in the dismember, and then some noble hierarchs for mana acceleration and the exalted effect, which will help us gain some additional damage here and there. Other than that, you've got your standard mana base of the Singleton Dryad Arbor to be able to fetch. You've got your two breeding pools, two basic forests, your Ink Moth Nexus, Pendle Havens, Waterlog Groves, and then fetch lands. For the sideboard with this list, we've got yet another dismember. So we've got three total dismembers. We've got another spell skite. So three total spell skite. A graph digger's cage for the oops matchup if we run into that. Two force of vigor and two wilt. This is a bit heavy for me on the artifact and enchantment hate. But we'll see how it plays out. And then four Veil of Summer, because who doesn't love a one mana cryptic command? And then Mystical Disputes and Spell Pierces. Personally, I would like one of these Spell Pierces main, but we're just going to run the list as is, since this list did 5 0 more recently than I 5 0 with Infect. So we'll see how we do. See you guys in the league. We lost the die roll, which is not great for us, but not the end of the world. Um, hmm. So we've got a Lurus on the other side. If we go turn one, Hierarch, turn two, Ink Moth Nexus, turn three, Pendle Haven Animate, plus one, plus two. Yeah, plus two, plus two, Hexproof, plus four, plus four. We get in for eight. And then they'd be dead on board. This only loses to a faster hammer time combo esque. <laughs> okay, there's a bobble. They bobble themselves. Bobbling themselves making me think probably red black. Cool. 
Of course, it's the Nazis. All right. I'm imagining this is probably Hierarch in the bin or Groundswell in the bin or the Blossoming Defense. It's one of these three. They take the Hierarch. That's understandable. They draw a card there. And then we get Blighted Agent. That's fine. We can go Windswept Heath past the turn here. That way we can fetch for a breeding pool tapped. Take as minimal damage as possible. Not that we need to be too concerned about damage, but at the same time, these lists do kind of sort of like to run uh, the Skyclave creature. So reducing our damage to a minimum doesn't sound like a bad plan. Because something tells me these guys are currently trying to play a Death Shadow. That's season number two. I was joking. I buy Blighted Agent. Okay, takes the Blossoming Defense. And then a Death Shadow. Go ahead and uh, fetch for this uh, breeding pool tapped. We draw, they draw. We draw a blossoming defense. Blue one agent. See, opponent's low enough that. This would be tempting to do on a normal creature. I'm assuming they have the removal here. Dismember? Of course, it has to be a dismember to grow their shadow to a 6-6. Six, six. We go down to 13. Hmm. Fetchland here is real interesting. From the aspect of we could play the Fetchland wait. And then on their instep, if they have tapped out of creatures. Go grab Dryad Arbor and smack them with Dryad Arbor for lethal. And play that second Death Shadow, so we are dead on board. Scale up. It's unfortunate this is turn three. Because we have them dead to rights. If we had one more mana. So land for turn pass, we have to block, we can't pump enough. Yeah, there's, there's no real point. We'd lose our ink moth here. We draw another ink moth. Okay. Still doesn't do anything. Um, this member comes in. Veils can come in. Spell Sky can come in. Like all of these effects. Um, Distortion Strike's good. Glistener Rail seems bad. I don't like mutagenic growths here. So those can definitely come out. Vines is a bit on the mana heavy side of cards, so we'll shave some of those, even though we really like the protection. Um, arguably, the dismember doesn't really save us anything. Uh, Hmm. <laughs> 
because you know, death sh death shadow just remembering a death shadow early on um meh The reason bring in veils is to blank bushes and thought seize here. Um, the spell sky is just so that way if they have more removal, we have more targets for them to have to hit. Other than that, we'll just see how this goes. Hmm. Always a good idea to stretch. All right, here we go. We would love to play first. And looks great, other than it's missing something. And I can say the same thing about this hand. Uh, down to five we go. Keep, bottom, grove, and groundswell. Upkeep, draw, we will do... Wooded foothills past the turn, make it look like we're holding up and fetch for something here. So that way they try to thought seize us and we go get a basic forest. Say so if we get to go to the end step, that's fine by me. Because it's this breeding pool. They're too greedy to be running Blood Moon is my theory who's ready for me to be blown out by that theory hierarch and shock in the breeding pool and pass the turn Okay. I'm assuming this is Fetch Shock Bolt. <laughs> now, Fetch Shock Push here would be interesting. From the aspect of would we try to save it? Up the floor. Blood Grip shocks it in. Interesting. Upkeep, we draw, we draw an Ink Moth Nexus. Arguably one of our best draws right there. We get to do that, we get to Spell Skite, and now we get to pass. Holding up two mana. Opponents got me wondering what they've got in hand. Pain costs and dismember.
I didn't even notice that that was on our beginning of combat step. Weird spot for that entire thing to take place. Bobbles. Bloodstained Mire. Okay. Bobbles themselves to see if they want the card. So we have five, six. Groundswell off the top here would be great. And plays down a shadow, sure. They have themselves a tutu. Can we draw another plus four plus four effect here? Pain costs now. Which is unfortunate. <laughs> Do we get our draw opponent? I'd like our draw. <sighs> and Fatal pushes the spell sky. Yeah, that'll happen. And uh, that'll work. They've got one black, unless it's exactly push here. Okay, they go a fetching. Fetch shock in. They have double push plus dismember hand, a bolt effect. Might have old Krosa. Bye bye. Oh, we've got three damage marked on our dude. Hit you for 11 infect. Death by poison counters. All right. I agree with what we did. Run it back. Arguably, I could see bringing in the spell pierces as a way to try to spell pierce thought sees. But hey. Alrighty. Assuming they're gonna take the play here. That they do indeed. Hand looks great, other than the fact that we can't cast any of these spells. Um, we'll keep this bottom ground swell. Show me the turn one thought sees opponent. They had it. 
They can now either take the veil right now and leave us with a pretty decent hand or take Hierarch so we don't have blue for this Blighted Agent or Glistener Elf. There's lots of lines that they could do. I feel the best line's probably either the Veil or the Hierarch. But I don't know what the rest of their hand is, so Veil might be a dead card. Hmm. It takes the veil, meaning that they have a thought cease for turn two. Since we know that they're going to try to pull apart our hand anyway, we go with this fetch shock hierarch pass. Yep, there's the thought sees. Blighted agent to the bin. Opponent really likes to take their time on their thought seizes. Actually, opponent likes to take their time in general. We're up six minutes. Not like it matters. This is game three after all. Uh, nobody's going to time in this unless opponent disconnects. Okay, they took the blossoming defense. Interesting. Have a way to get rid of this hierarch? Because if not, depending on what I rip here. Huh. So we could either go elf hold up vines. Hierarch, Elf, go Shields down. Not opposed to going Hierarch, Elf, Shields down here. Because minimalistically this says, I've got mana. And it presents a very nice threat off of this Blighted Agent that they know is in hand. So they kind of sort of need... Thought sees number three. Because if they go for removal, they have to have either two removal pieces to get rid of both of these hierarchs. Or. <coughs> a way to remove the Glistener Elf and a way to remove the Blighted Agent. They are taking themselves down real low for this Death Shadow. Interesting that they got a basic there. Kozilex return. Okay. Okay. Not a card I was expecting them to bring in against me. But makes enough sense. Pass the turn. Now what we're really hoping for is a fetch land. Shadow one, shadow two, shadow three. End my life. Hmm. 
I'm feeling needle names ink moth nexus. Or spell skite. Both aren't bad name. Only one shadow. Okay. Okay. So land here into well it's actually two lands if we've got the life for it because we go land pass land agent hold up vines vines whatever their threat is on our agent and then kill them with scale up might of old Krosa. we're down to 11 I'm genuinely sorry. I know that the cosmic return isn't for infect, but it's good tech against infect. <laughs> we go down to five, so now we'd have to play out this blighted agent as a blocker. I'm playing this blighted agent out as a blocker, we still lose. We get our ink moth. We get a glistener elf. I'm assuming they have a way to kill this glistener elf in their two cards. They take us down. Turn seven, we didn't hit a land. And welcome to variants. There's our land. <laughs> the one land that we couldn't use, of course. All right. Starting off 01. Hands got lands, got a scale up. Hands potential for a turn two here. We will be keeping this. Hoping that the uh, Glistener Elf doesn't get killed on turn one. Yeah, we will keep Wooded Foothills. Interesting. Okay. I don't like opponent leading on foothills and foothills alone, so we're gonna go get a basic forest here. Just in case this is a Blood Moon deck. It's very interesting to have to hinge our bets on it being a Blood Moon deck, but at the same time, I really don't want to get blown out by that card. Okay, and looks like we were right to guess Blood Moon deck here, meaning they need a Arbor Elf here. Okay. All right. So they've got the Elf. We go this green scale up here. 
See if opponent wants to block. If opponent doesn't block, they lose. Yep. They block, and we pass the turn. Blood Moon? Pyromancer. Okay. Make some tokens here. Bitches, Beast and Pillage. Okay. We'll go Ink Moth Nexus, Hierarch, Green One, Spell Skite, pass the turn. And move in on this Ink Moth Nexus next turn if they don't have the Blood Moon. Okay, they do have the Blood Moon. can't say I'm surprised. Vines. So opponent no longer has access to green mana. It has to be a bit awkward for them. I know this is just going to be chump blocked. But... If we're forcing the chumps, we're forcing the chumps. Nice pillage there, opponent. <laughs> uh, strictly because it's pillage, we get to do that. Any other card, and we get destroyed by that line. All right. <laughs> hey, they have access to green mana now. Torch of Defiance. Yeah. But we down taken on the Glistener Elf. Is that our plan here? A blue mutagenic growth. <clears throat> Neat. We'll attack them here. I'm not too worried about Chandra for a bit. If they block, we get to... We can just Groundswell. I doubt we're hitting a land for this plus four for a bit. Knowing Infect. Yes, they'll be able to exile and make their tokens. And if they're doing that, that means that they're not doing anything with Chandra other than upticking for mana. Exiles the top card. It's a stomping ground. Neat. They have three cards in hand and five minutes to spend. Gotta love it when you're dead wrong.
swing here, get the exalted trigger. This way, they either have to block or make token. Oh, they have to make tokens to keep it alive. The question is, do they chump or not? If they go for the double block, we're in great shape. If they go for the chump block, we're still fine. Because now we can swing. Well, if we swing both at Chandra, now Chandra's not dead. And her is a minus four. So goes up, we block, can go up one more time, and then we have to be able to kill. Which we should, because Blossoming Defense is two. We're in an alright spot here. They add mana. Blood Moon two, or Bridge. Pyromancer number two. Okay. Now we're looking a bit of trouble. Which is elf. Why would you why would you get rid of Clothis? That card seems so good against Infect. Glorybringer, sure. An exert trying to target. On dragon. Either way, it's eating a blossoming defense. It doesn't matter where it's going. We take four, go down to nine. And I'll land off the top. I'm assuming this just gets chump blocked. Do they try to push more into it is the question. They go with two more. We're forcing us to go ahead and blossoming defense now. Dealing one and three. They lose two. We have to pass the turn here. With one card in hand. Utopia sprawls on their forest. Name's green. Yep. Exiles the top, hits a Utopia Sprawl. Probably just lets that go to hit me for two. Okay. And Blood Moon too, okay. Can get in for two if they want. They choose not to. Understandable. So, four, five, six. There's nothing we can draw off the top here that wins us this game, unfortunately. And if they're smart, they go down tick here, exert here. And leave us with just noble hierarch. Again, you should definitely be swinging with everything. I have to pay life here. Because you didn't swing with everything, I now have another turn, unless you choose to just... Because this is four... If you had swung with everything, I would have had to still block. I now have one turn if you uptick Chandra, if they downtick to kill. I now need exactly two cards off the top. I cannot find two cards in one draw, so we lose. We go down to one. And again, there's one of the two. We now would just need a pump spell. Let's see if we can't bait the concede.
green concede. We don't have it. <laughs> okay, duck. So facing Blood Moon. Well, well, force, force, spell sky. Um, we can leave in dismembers. They're not great. Distortion strikes are great. Mutagenics can come out. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Ground swell and the vines. Yeah. Um, there's an argument to be had about these, but they kill Clothis, which is going to be extremely hard for us to deal with in any other way, shape, or form. All right, we will take the play here. Um,. And seems pretty strong. We'll try it. I think it forces them to have turn one interaction. That uh, fetch forest. Yep. Herbarial. Come immense. Interesting one. Waterlog Grove, this here. Combat. Five ya. Assuming they don't want to take five. Yep. A braid? Stomp? Cards we didn't see in game one at all? Why? Why would you bring in Oof? You just like spell Skype that much? Make my guy a 2-3. Blood Moon. Kitchen Finks. Okay. Interesting choice. As far as blockers go. That forest crack this to draw a card. We draw a spell sky. Nice draw. Now we could go. Breeding pool tapped. These two spell sky past turn. I need to swing into the. Although persist doesn't work with infects. Fun facts. The second oof, sure. I now have an O4 blocker. And then has the stomp. Of course. Of course they have it. Because why wouldn't they? I mean, I figured that they were running it. Like, it was just unlucky that we didn't see any game one. I'm, of course, I'm, it's a zero four 4 blocker. Why am I not going to block this? Opponent, use your face. Um, they're at 16. If we go land, scale up. 
they don't block, they lose. Sounds fine to me. Oh, you didn't block? You poor fool. You poor fool. Welcome to Infect. Hit you for 16. <laughs> God, I love Infect. All right. Run it back. He said, ha ha, bet that's a first. Mm, done it before. It's so fun to do. Hmm. That, fetch for basic, do this. I didn't respect the wall. <laughs> uh. Okay, they go with the Utopia Sprawl. Good for us. It means we get another turn here, which means we get a lot of Hierarchs down. I doubt that they brought in Board Wipes. They probably have a good amount of targeted removal. Unfortunate. Because this one lander is about to start hurting. Because something tells me they've got the Blood Moon. I mean, I guess they need Blood Moon plus Bolt here. For us to be real concerned. Okay. Mm. Untaps. Taps this for green, double red. Chandra? Just make me regret my day. Oh, oof. Sure. I'm fine with oof. As long as they don't have stomp two. They have stomp two. Ooh, no stomp two? Sweet. I would really like lands. At some point, deck. See, the unfortunate part is we both kept one landers. However, they produce six mana. Yep, they get to untap the forest and then they get to tap it for six. Arguably, we shouldn't have played out the Glistener Elf. The reason we played out the Glistener Elf is to try to bait anything to go hit the Glistener Elf. There's the Torch of Defiance, which is minus three on the elf, I'm assuming. Adds red. Okay. Why? Why? <laughs> Why did we bring in anger? Or was it just... They didn't have enough cards to remove. We play this, it gets shot. We're not surprised in the slightest. Three mana, Bone Crusher. Land off the top. Not a land. 
Yeah, yeah, we take six from the Bone Crusher. Three mana pillage. <laughs> Opponent's rude. <laughs> uh. Kitchen Finks comes down, gains them some life. Chandra adds mana, blood moons, bleh. Own it, please. The scale up, that's a fun card. I like to be able to cast cards. I mean, we kept a one lander against a pillage deck. I'm not surprised here. This outcome is very much expected. We take five, they've got a two turn clock on us here. We can't really stop it. <laughs> we need land plus um, another Utopia Sprawl. Wow. Another Blood Moon. Okay. So we need land plus exactly Force of Vigor here. That will not do it. All right. Give the opponent the GGs. Because we ain't getting there. <laughs> Uh, we could uh, swing with that. See how long to land we'd be able to wilt one. Yeah, we weren't we weren't gonna get there against them. Going down with infect, close one, but mm, just didn't get there. I would love to take the play. Ba -ba 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 -ba. We'll keep. It's missing some pump, but you know what's the one thing we can draw really well? Pump spells. Pendlehaven Hierarch past the turn. And Steam Vince shocked in. That's an interesting one. Dryad Arbor. Do that. Get this spell skite down past the turn. I need to swing with the hierarch. A shock in Steam Vince is interesting. Opt? Yeah. So some blue red control deck, probably blue red electro balance. That's gonna be unfortunate. They fetch here. It's a mountain. Red, red, cleansing wildfire. Anamorphos. Okay. Blue, red, stormwing, and blue, red prowess. Okay. So they put both cards that they scried to the bottom. They are tapped out. We can animate swing and not have to worry about this getting killed and ping for three. Sounds pretty good to me. You've got ourselves a 3-4. Damage? Cool. Opponent loses their Stormwing Entity. And plays a Sprite Dragon out. Well... 
we draw the scale up, which is interesting. We'll play that out. We'll animate the ink moth. And we'll go to combat here. And we'll go ahead and try to give it plus one, plus two. They go for the lava dart. Before that resolves, we will go ahead and just cast... No, we'll cast the Mind of Old Crusa. No, we'll cast the Vines. The protection's needed. Because then they can't redo their Lava Dart. And we've got ourselves a 3-4. They choose to throw it in front again. They go with the mutagenic growth. All the you mutagenic my creature. Yeah, sounds good to me. Uh, lava darts targeting the hierarch. Kings, their guy grows, killing ours. Unfortunate, but hey, they also now only have a 1-1. One, one. Okay, they swing for one. No blocks. So, 6-10... Pump spell off the top here. Soul Scar Mage, unfortunate. They were able to get a blocker down. Dismember. Hmm. Take opponent down to two. Make it so that way they are dead on board to our Dryad Arbor. If they tap their Fiery Islet. They opt to grow their Sprite Dragon. We're down at nine. They go down to one to play the Swift Spear. They swing. Pump spell, they lose. We go down to six. Let's thin the deck a bit here. It's arbitrary, but hey, you never know. Upkeep, we draw land. Mean. Give that plus one plus two. In combat swing here. Salted trigger. They block. Sounds good. Put that in the play tapped. Pass the turn. They can't tap that eyelet for mana. They can't swing with the sprite dragon. 
if they don't play down another creature. Let's draw ourselves a card here at the end step. Okay. This one also an awkward draw. Hierarch number two. So we play this out. Go here. It's a four five. So they have to have a spell to pump their sprite dragon. Burst lightning us. Redirect. I have blue mana. <laughs> Your 4-4 four four gets killed by my 4-5. And then you have... Mm, you're at one life. All right. Getting game one there is really good for us. Um... Spell Pierce doesn't seem terrible. Dismember is really bad. Yes, it can kill things. However, we need to not be killed by their things. So being able to Spell Pierce their spells, not terrible. Because they don't have a lot of additional mana. Um, spell Skites, again, not awful. <laughs> being able to redirect spells... Not bad at all. I like the vines. I like the blossoming defense. We can shave one of these scale ups. And they, they might bring in moons, but I'm not gonna board for that. And let's see if we get punished. Um, yeah, we can keep this hand. Hierarch, Hierarch. Like, yeah, we're missing a Infect creature, but we don't need an Infect creature to win this game. As we just saw, we won through normal damage last time. Spire Bluff Canal passes the turn, meaning they have an opt. Or a bolt. We still run the Hierarch out. Red mana, flame slash, sure. Land? It's not a land. Has the gut shot. Fun. Into the Stormwing Entity. Yep. Scries too. Put both on bottom. Land. Goes for the mutagenic growth. It's six. As two. Do we have TBR plus spell? Nope, we've got Stormwing Entity. This smacks us for six. We can't block it. Down to 14 we go. There's our land. Right on time. Spell Skeet. So now one of these Stormwing Entities gets left back as a blocker at all times. Yep. 
if they try to go in. So... We can give this hexproof. I don't want to lose it. <clears throat> Storming entity number three, of course. Of course, they have entity three. But both on bottom. It's in for eight. And that will be lethal, right? There's nothing we can do to stop this. Other than like. Land and distortion strike off the top here. Yeah, that's lethal because we're down to six. We can animate swing for nine, but it gets blocked by the Stormwing Entity because it's got flying. Some fun stuff. All right. Okay. Um. We're on the play. I don't like these mutagenics. We'll take out the mutagenics and bring in the dismembers. <sighs> Just because mutagenic while it is plus two plus two, it is hurting us. So it only enables for some slight advantage. Um. Interesting. We keep this because it's agent plus two, no, plus a straight hex proof and something else. Okay, we both started with seven. Do this, pass the turn. This is a debatable keep. I don't know if it's going to be able to get there, and the waterlogged grills are going to hurt us to be able to do so. Spire bluff, swift spear, fun. The vines there is really nice. Hopefully we can hit a land in the next two draws. So that way we have land, blighted agent, protection into kill ya. Blue, green, blighted agent, pass turn. Ooh. Flame Slash. We'll go with just this. Okay, well, they had the double. I knew that they'd have to have the double there. We purposely laid out to force it. Sadly panned out for them. We now need a creature. We're at 13. Cash in one of these groves, trying to find ourselves a creature. Oh, we find ourselves a creature. It's not great. And we can't even cast it. Bloodstained Mire hits us for one here. And probably has light up the stage. We go down to 12. Ooh, interesting. There we go. This, that, spell skite. Okay. A 
opponents at 20. A bit unfortunate for us. From the aspect of we're not getting there with a spell sky. Blue, red, upgrade, destroy target artifact. Yep, yep. <laughs> Have removal piece for lava darts me. There's no point to redirect the lava dart to the spell sky. Lights up the stage, sure. It's Stormwing and Bone Crusher. So they could stomp. It doesn't, I mean, they have stomp anyway, no matter what. Yeah, they also have the lava dart. So they do that. They grow their swift spear. Damage happens. Stormwing gets played. I'm assuming they play the Stormwing. Yep. And then they have Stomp to take us down to seven. Goes to four plus two, six. They need one spell in their top three. Yeah, they've got this in the bag. There is nothing we can do other than... See, Dismember... Dismember currently costs us a life. No, it's, it's net neutral. Ink Moth passed the turn. If we can somehow live this turn, I doubt we are. Sprite Dragon comes down. That's a fun one. Okay. Stomps us, triggers. Uh, so two, four, six. I mean, it's the same amount of damage either way. We're still dead. We take two and then we take four. And not a land, so it didn't matter. Cool. Going 0 3 with Infect. I'll take the play. Um, nope. No good colors of mana. Um, awkward keep. It's awkward from the aspect that we're putting down Blighted Agent. Uh, forest past turn. Alright, he wished us the best of luck and to have some fun. I obviously wish the same to Mana Symbol. I believe... His Twitch is just twitch.tv slash Mana Symbol. Hey, Ko, thank you very much for the raid. What'd you play tonight? How'd you do? Always appreciate it. Thank you very much, man. So for those who don't know who Ko is, he is the last Abzan streamer. Went 3-2? Nice. Yeah, I'm not doing too hot. I did 2-3 with Hammer, and I'm 0-3 right now with Infect. 
So we'll see how this league can turn out. I mean... Just some unfortunate matchups. And there's the push. Yay. So we've got... Not much. We started out as well. Oh, yeah. O2 doesn't mean anything. You can still win out and get three twos all the time. Problem is when you're O3, you now are just kind of trying to scrap around for lunch money. And based on the fact of what we're seeing over here, we probably aren't going to do too well against Mana Symbol here. Looks to be either Demir, my guess is probably th some form of three color control here. But, alright, Salt Eye. Yep. That's nice and fun. And Growth Spiral. Yep. Of course. And what land do they put into play here? Probably the Triumph if they have it. If they don't, well, they put in a fetch land and then they go get the Triumph. I am really missing the Goyf package in the sideboard. Because opponent's down to 13 life. You just board out into the creature package instead. There have been lots of matches where Goyf would just destroy... Because nobody expects Goy from Infect. We so fetching Dryad Arbor is eight. So nine, not lethal. So we get the breeding pool. And then a blighted agent. Now that's not terrible here. Undo, I want to keep up as much colored mana as possible, even though we only have one blossoming defense. <sighs> Salt eye. Yeah, there's the remand. The four mana agent. Hope they don't have anything. Odds are they have stuff. Neat. They had the second push. So, probably going to be taking the loss here. I mean, we still got the Inkmoth Nexus, so we're not out of it. But this goes, picks up Fatal Push. Yep. So, we now have Animate. Hope that they don't have Counter Magic for the Blossoming Defense. And we can get in for nine infects. Dismembers a real dead card here. Um. So we know that they have the push in hand. I guess we just try to see if we can get the push out with just a one one. Get in for some chip damage. Okay, moves to blockers. We'll see what we can try to get them to do. So, okay. So they just take three. And I'm assuming this is probably an attempted push on our instep. push targets there this blossoming defense you can't really do anything to prevent the push so on the bright side they have the remand that's targeting the blossoming defense that'll happen we now try to resolve a second blossoming defense just to keep our guy around. Yes, we lose out on two points of damage. We were hoping that that would all happen in the blocker's step off of the mutagenic. However, mana symbol decided three damage is fine. 
All right, Missy Rainforest. Also, I just realized this is not this. This is fourth color. It's the fourth triome. Interesting. I am concerned. We will draw a card here. Just because I need stuff to do. That's not things to do. All right, all right. Cards in hand. What can they? What can mana do? Cryptic bounce and draw. Okay, why is them an entire turn? I don't get why you wouldn't encounter the Hierarch Bounce the Ink Moth. There's the Renin Six. So stalls for a turn. Doesn't have green, so has to fetch. It's green, plays Ura. Oh, wow. Greedy Mr. Symbol. Okay, does that and then has Jace and can brainstorm Jace. All right, looks like they've got this game in the bag. We're not going to really be able to pull it out from nowhere from the aspect of they've got more than enough counter magic. We need them to tap down a second time. I doubt that's happening. Because at this point, they fate seal us into oblivion and they make sure that they hit their land drops. And they search for Uro. Like, I'm, I'm waiting to see a win condition other than the J-Salt. But the J-Salt in itself does it here, so we're not going to really be able to do much. But hey. Okay, they pick up a Misty Rainforest. We know that they've got stuff. Okay, more Mind Sculptor shenanigans. That's what I need to play. I'm in the mood for some. There's the arrow. All right, now they've got themselves. Not only there's the arrow, there's the arrow plus the arrow coming back from the yard. Because it's that, and then you also have the escape. With the green, green, blue, blue. Doesn't want to tap out, wants to hold up cryptic. Smart. Very smart, because if the infect player has exactly... What I currently have in hand, you would lose. But instead, plays it safe, and we won't be able to do anything. That picks up Sanctuary number three, probably. Oh no, Steam Vents. Four, six, seven. I'm assuming this is gonna oh cycling. Okay. I was about to say, are they about to try to do bounce ink moth again with the cryptic? There's the field of the dead. As we were expecting. That uptick run in six, grab your rainforest, play your rainforest, crack. 
play arrow and uh, hold up counter magic green green blue blue yep and still has enough to hold up cryptic here so at that point the writing is on the wall Reflecting pool. Interesting. Arrow gets to stick around. They've got a cryptic, however. And then brainstorms again. Yep, that'll definitely seal our fate. This is 10 damage on board. This member doesn't kill the arrow. He just need to be faster games two games three um windswept doesn't buy us anything here we make sure that they cryptic us mm. scale up fun And tap my team. And tap the team, draw a card. Yep, yep. And we pass the turn. What did you try to push? All right. Do -do 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 -do. Begins combat. Swings for 10. If we hit exactly scale up off the top. Oh God. Second field of the dead. We are now dead on board. 100% if they get to untap. So that's 10. Field of the dead. So we need scale up and or what's it called? Become immense. The plus six spell. Yep, yep, they do that. And we are more than dead. They get to draw three. I, at this point, I'd fate seal me. But who knows? Uh, mainly because they're having to move to cleanup. And discard down to hand size. interesting that we draw exactly what we would need to try this in response we are going to uh, Dismember arrow. And fetch. <laughs> we go right on our own terms, dang it. All right. So against four color control, veils, disputes, and pierces all seem pretty good. Dismembers can come out. Opponents have got a couple pieces of target removal. I'd imagine they probably have Bolt as well, so I want to keep these spell guides in. Mutagenics just don't seem to do it. Um, we're either winning before they get out a creature, so Distortion Strike can come out, and we need two more here.
We'll shave a scale up and ground swell. That feels right. I'm not going to bring in the third spell, Skype, because they don't have a lot of targeted removal, but they've got some. So we'll see how bringing in the counter package works here. Hmm. Okay. We need to keep slightly more explosive hands. At the same time, we're bringing in so much counter magic that it feels wrong to keep super explosive hands. I would love to take the play. So we've got Pendle Haven into Glistener Elf into a Hierarch plus Groundswell is six on turn two. And then we'd have a Blossoming Defense up. Uh, it's close. We'll try it. I hate it when they're close like this. Like the main issue is the fact that it's double Pendlehaven hand here. I probably should be mulliganing more towards interaction, but hey, we'll take our 04 loss here because I made mistakes on keeping. So if you are interested in seeing the other side of this, Mana Symbol is currently streaming and a shout out to him go check him out he's a great streamer and their list seems very interesting i'm not watching it because that would be rude we're here to play games of magic not stream snipe each other i just saw that he was live okie doke and now we can do waterlogged grove hold up a Piece of interaction. Arguably, we could drop down both of these. Yeah. We've got protection for one. Okie doke. There we go. Trium passes. So now's where funny things happen. Ooh, that makes it less funny. So we can do it here. Play down Pendlehaven, keep the untapped Pendlehaven. Combat, swing for three, and then try to Groundswell and Blossoming Defense. Groundswell, give it plus four, plus four, make it seven. 
Okie doke. Let's see if he wants to take seven. Or do we have the push? Take seven passes the turn. We've got lethal on board. Pushes one. Okay. Needs push plus remand, or well, push plus uh, mana leak. Hmm. That is their out to this game. Or a creature. Uro gains you life. Yorg still dead on board. Miss Pendlehaven's gonna get there. Land has fetch for push. We've got the defense and the vines. Land do this. And combat swing for three. All right, there we go. Onwards to game three. They're going to be on the play, which is going to make this a lot harder, but not impossible. Anything we want? No. Yep. I like how we boarded. Send it back. Let's see how we can do. Um, it's keepable. It's missing pump, but it's got creature. It's got interaction. It's got the good bait with a turn one hierarch. Then we've got mystical disputes. And blighted agents. Do this, shock it in. I don't like seeing land there because that means we're going to be flooding out. But hey. If we do this, we pass. Scalding turns played. We could Blighted Agent hold up Dispute. However, Dispute doesn't do us anything here. Um... I'm not opposed to second hierarch past the turn. Allows us to dispute if they try to grow spiral here. Because I don't want them ramping. Cool. Say so I'm not afraid of an Uro. I guess this specifically we're scared of okay ooh Veil's real good there because Veil allows us to blank if they go with a push They have the counter, we have the dispute. Paying costs, probably trying to what? Remand? Encounter target spell. I like dispute this. Force of Negation. Veil of Summer. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Do 
get in for one or two actually yes it's a bit inefficient from the aspect of we show them that we're not holding anything else but So they've got cryptic here. Listen or else not terrible. Let's go ahead and tap that. I really dislike drawing all of these fetch lands. Waterlogged Grove, combat. Let's see if we get the swing with the blighted agent. We do, yay. Gets in for three. Return clock. Mm, pass the turn. Brr, we are definitely flooding out, though. Okay, fetches with the rainforest here. It's a watery grave shocked in. Double blue, triple blue. Target player draws two. Yeah. And cycles the sandbar. Sure. So we will crack this waterlogged grove here shortly. Archmage's charm. I mean, I can't stop it, but permanent CMC one or less, so they can grab a hierarch. That's fine. Cycles the sandbar, so they have a Archmage's charm plus three unknowns in hand. I want to draw a card. Um, we know about, <laughs> we just go for the poke here. Take the six, pass the turn. blue green growth spiral yeah that resolves when i've got three lands in hand as the infect player yeah i can't really do much to stop that okay mystic sanctuary to put Either Force of Negation or Second Archimage Charm back on top would be my guess. And try to play the counter game. Second Archimage Charm, sure. So, no push, which is saving us quite a lot here. And draws two off of Archimage. We're what a pump spell away. Burrow happens. Draws cards. Gain some life. However, need to hold up counter magic. Pushes a hierarch. Yeah, that'll happen. Do 
We've now got Archmage Charm, possibly Archmage plus Force of Negation. Hmm. All right, we do this in step. We'll go ahead and crack this just to thin our deck. Get ourselves the forest. And we draw Blighted Agent number two. Interesting, we'll go Breeding Pool tapped here. Begin combat, swing, exalted trigger happens. One, two, three, four, five. Become immense. I know that they have the counter spell. Fatal pushes, sure. Blue one, blighted agent. Oh, it's where I need to do that post combat. Blue one, agent. Spell snare, sure. Listen, Earl. And cracks the rainforest, so they'll have Uro out, meaning we have to get in through the air. <laughs> and we know that they have Archmage's Charm in hand, I think is their last card. I could be wrong. Hmm. All right. Let's think what they could do. So green, green, blue, blue, hold up three. All right, to gain them a life, it means that we can't swing on the ground. Doesn't buy them any time, but allows them to start drawing cards with arrow. Hmm. Renin six, sure. Renin six, ping the hierarch. Yep. One card left in hand. We're definitely killing Renin six here. Actually, no. Newly controlled, tap for mana, old one, animate. In combat, get in for two, in fact. Attack mana symbol, take mana symbol to eight, then we have lethal in the air. Okay. What you got for me, symbol? Sure. Pings there. Hmm. Holds up everything. 
Okay. And the vines off the top there is exactly what we want to see. Because it allows us to do this. Attack with a single one. Begin combat. Swing at mana symbol. Push this, that, cast with kicker. Campaign costs. Dark Mage Charm, counter target spell, good attempt. You're out of cards, we go get a forest. And a Veil of Summer. And that'll be game. GG's to Mr. Symbol. And that'll make us one and three. Let's fight for scraps. <laughs> These have been a lot of close games, though. Facing Swagasaurus. Um, it's interesting. It's a one lander, so I'm not a big fan of it. But it is a hierarch. And a Blighted Agent with Spell Skite Protection. We'll try it. Mountain Guide. Okay, so burn? This is not good. Reveals Groundswell. Yeah, well, that kind of gives away what we are. Burn, huh? This fetch. It, it's going to be fetch shock just so that way I've got blue when they kill this hierarch. Because it's burn. They're going to kill the hierarch. Like I said, it's burn. They always kill it. And a Vines of Vastwood. We are now at the mercy of this goblin guide. Awkward that we both kept one landers. It makes me really question what they've got. Okay. We're not finding any land here. And then they suspend a Rift Bolt. We're taking five next turn. We have to discard. We'll discard the agent that they know about. Bolt hits our face. We go down to eight. guides I'm surprised that burn hasn't hit another land and mutagenic growth huh so that puts us down to six rift bolt puts us down to one Bolt takes us down to three. Do they have the bolt? All right. Uh, they get there. Surprising no one. This is a terrible matchup. Um, especially considering how we don't have any removal. We don't have any of our life gain stuff in this sideboard. Because Burns disappeared. 
Okay. As far as what's bad. Pierce gains us a bit of life if we can land it. Mutagenics are awful. Spell Skite's nice. Um, get rid of a singleton vines. No, scale up. And run it like so. See how we do. Well, this might be a very quick end. It's better. It's not good enough. This, on the other hand, has potential to be a turn two. We have to draw our insane one of. But. If the burn player chooses to not bolt our glistener off on turn one, we're in the clear. The odds of them choosing to not do that are zero. I am all too familiar with this matchup. Fetch shock bolts the glistener off. Opponent, no. Okay, okay, they held back. Opponent's fine. Mm, this. I mean, I'm tempted to just make it a 2 3. And hold up Spell Pierce. Okie doke. So they lose their Swiss Spear. We keep our elf around. And we've got this Windswept Heath to go grab ourselves a Spell Pierce. Anna. Arid Mesa fetches. Let's see this Searing Blaze. Adelon's what we're hoping to avoid. But... Burn. They probably have the other. Oh. Ah, oh, what a good call by me. This, you, that, shock in. No. Get that searing blaze out of here. And so, land off the top wins us this game. Okay. Spell Skite, so that way we get to keep our Glistener off the round and get in for a single point of chip damage. Hmm. Paying costs, Goblin Guide, yeah. Eidolon, sure. So they've got enough blockers, which is real unfortunate. So we go blue one, blighted agent, take damage off the Eidolon, always yield. And uh, pass the turn here. Hope this blighted agent gets to stick around and we don't have to use the vines of Vastwood. And that will be above four life when we get the turn back.
suspends a rift bolt. Nice. It's real good for us. Okay. Holds back. Scale up. One's got two cards in hand. Go down to ten. Swing with the unblockable ten infector. And onwards to game three. Borrow Charm deals four to me. Cool. I go to six. You go to dead. All right. In game three it is. I like how we sideboarded. We run it back. Let's see if we can pull it off twice. And apparently doesn't know how this matchup works. It's called board in all your removal. Um meh. Sure. Bottom. No, bottom of land, bottom of the grove. Go with the windswept teeth, pass the turn. Idle on, yep. Is a card. Breeding pool, shock it in. Undo, let's get a basic forest here. Play out the Glistener Elf. And pass with um, vines or pierce up depending on what they do. Vines, if they try to do one mana removal. Pierce, if they try to do two mana. Swings for two. No blocks. Yours, me. Okay. I'll let that happen. I want to keep this glistener elf alive. Second Eidolon. Okay. Just 
distortion strike. Um, we're dead if we do it that way. Uh, we don't have a way to get past second Eidolon. Right? I mean, our way is... Try to brute force. I'm assuming they're just gonna not block. Because it's only five. They do block. Okay. We have a shot. It's a very, very slim shot. Okay, and there goes all chances that we had. Because now we cannot play a spell. Goblin Guide Trigger shows us Spell Skite. Need to draw past that anyway to try to find an out. We don't have one, but, you know, make it seem like we're searching. We take four, go down to two. Opponent's got two cards in hand. And they have the bolt. Cool, cool. Like I said, turn matchup. Real difficult for Infect. Ending the night, 1-4 with Infect and 2-3 with Hammer. Overall, Infect still felt fun. Um, I, I, I still like the plan of mainboard Infect stuff. I wasn't a big fan of some of what this sideboard was doing. I'm a fan of some of it, but not all of it. I think we'll retool this variant um, and see how we do with that later.